Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and it is May. So I thought to kick off the month of May and the middle grade May readathon, I would do a wrap up of this current school year's Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalists. Now if you follow my channel for a while, you know that this is a list that I read from um, or I have read from for the last several years ever since my kids were in middle school and now they are both in high school. Uh, it is uh, a list that's chosen by the Florida um, Florida for Media and Education, which is basically the Association of School Librarians in the state of Florida. Each year they choose 15 books in, I think, four different age groups. And the um, Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalists, there's a group for third to fifth grade and a group for sixth to eighth grade. I'm not sure what they call the uh, younger elementary group. And then for high school, they have the Florida Teen Reads. So I love reading the middle grade books. I got started helping my daughter's middle school librarian with her event that she holds every year called Book Bowl. And we, uh, we read the books and uh, pull questions from them. We also serve the kids who are participating in Book Bowl. We serve them the food that the book characters eat in the books. So um, I just really have fun with the whole event in general. And I got most of the books read before Book Bowl this year, except one. So I read it, finished it a couple of weeks ago, and now I have checked out all of the books from the library so that I could just do a little wrap up and give you a few tidbits uh, from each book. Some of them I have done individual reviews of, and I will link those below. And um, all of them I uh, I rated highly. Uh, one of them I gave three stars, and all the rest I rated four and five stars. So I'm going to kind of tell you about them in order of my preference. So I'm going to start with the five star books, and then go to the four stars, and then the the three star at the end. And all of them I would recommend for um, for you, for especially if you're participating in Middle Grade May. And uh, by the way, if you don't know about Middle Grade May, I'll link my announcement video for that. And, um, and on that video, you can learn about the hosts and all of that stuff. So, uh, so let's get started. So these are the books that I gave five stars to in uh, from this list of 15 books. And um, not in necessarily in any particular order, but these are my top five for um, for this list. So first I want to tell you about The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. On audio this was narrated by Christina Moore. I thought it was a fantastic book. I won't go into a lot of detail because I'm sure you've heard all about it. Um, but it is a fairy tale book set in a magical land where there's magic and witches and uh, it's just a really good book, and I, I definitely recommend it. Uh, and it is a Newbery winner. So if it, even if it hadn't been on the Sunshine State list, I would have still read it eventually because it's a, a Newbery winner, and I, I definitely uh, would recommend it. Uh, then next, The War That Saved My Life by Kelly Brubaker Bradley. This is a Newbery honor book, so eventually I would have gotten around to this one too, I think. Uh, I love this book. It is historical fiction set in World War II about a young girl with a twisted foot whose mother is just uh, her, her mother's hideous she does um, she's ashamed of her because of her twisted foot she um, just won't do anything uh, for her and expects her to uh, to wait on her so you know the mother expects the daughter to wait on the mother it's <laughs> too many hers in that last sentence. Um, but it, it's just a fantastic book. Uh, it's set in London, World War II. Well, the beginning part is set in London when all of the kids then are shipped out to the country to try to keep them safe. And her mother wasn't even going to let her go, but she's able to sneak out with her brother, tag along, and that's what saves her. Uh, it saves her from the horrible mother. And it's just a beautiful story of her life. Uh, after that and and there is definitely some adversity you know the mother does come back into the picture um, but it, it's just a fantastic story and I highly recommend it then my favorite uh, my favorite mystery well it's I think it's really the only mystery in this group but I love it it's a middle grade mystery uh, the series is toast t-o-a-s-t theory of all small things this first book is called framed and it's about an art heist our main character's father is a an art an art uh, investigator I believe he's an um, art crime investigator 
that seems awfully specific. Uh, he, he works with art and museums and, and things like that. Maybe security. Yeah, he, he de designs security systems, things like that, I think, for museums. Um, but the main character, his name is uh, Florian Bates. He reminds me a lot of Sean Spencer from Psych because he's very observant. And so when he tags along with his father, who's called in to work on this heist, he starts observing things that none of the adults are noticing. And so the FBI begins to ask for his help, and it just goes on from there. I thought it was fantastic. Then uh, the next one, again, fantastic. I can't keep saying fantastic, but these top five books were, really. Uh, it Ain't So Awful Falafel by Feruze Dumas. I did not expect to like this. I didn't really know what I expected from this book. I didn't think I would be able to relate to it. It's about a girl. Uh, she is from Iran, but her family has lived in the United States for three years. Here's what I thought was uh, what I uh, related to so much. It's set in the 70s. So the main character of this book is just about the same age as me that I was in the 70s. So all these things happening around her, all this, um, of course, you can imagine, here's a girl from Iran in the 70s, so you know that, you know what's coming. The Iran hostage crisis, uh, you know, all of that stuff that happened um, in the 70s, and so... Here she is sitting here in the United States and she's learning about what's happening in Iran to friends and family and all that they're going through. And then, of course, the uh, hostage crisis happens and then, you know, all of a sudden people from the U.S. are starting to hate people from Iran because of the hostage situation. And, you know, of course, she's a 12-year-old. She doesn't have anything to do with that, but she certainly feels the the racism and the um, the negative effects of it. And uh, I thought it was a fantastic book. It is narrated on audio by the author, and she's amazing. Uh, I can't wait to read some other books by her. I thought she had just a wonderful voice for, um, for writing. I mean, she's just, it's just wonderful. So I definitely recommend this book. Uh, and then the last one that I gave five stars to is The Girl in the Well is Me by Karen Rivers. I read this in print. This book gave me a lot of anxiety, but I couldn't hardly put it down. It is about a girl who, she's trying to, she's in a new place, a new location, and she's trying to fit in with the in crowd, these mean girls. And they say, okay, well, you can be in our group if you stand on this platform and sing. They take her out to this remote place, stand her up on this platform. Well, the platform gives way, and she falls in a well. And these other girls who are up top are just ridiculous. And <clears throat> it's just the story of her being in the well. You get to hear about her memories. You see what's going through her head while she's in the well, hoping and waiting to be rescued. And um, it's it's great. I, I really, really, um, I hesitate to say I enjoyed it because like I said, I got a lot of anxiety. But it's, it's definitely a book that I recommend reading. And uh, it is The Girl in the Well is Me. Okay, so I'm going to put these back up and get the next group. Okay, so the next five are books that I gave four stars to. I rated four stars, and I've kind of ranked them in order of favorite to least favorite. Probably for the rest of uh, the remainder of the ten, I'll kind of loosely give you sort of my favorites to least favorite. Uh, but like I said, I would recommend all of them. My next favorite was definitely Randoms by David Lease. This is a fun uh, sci-fi adventure story about a, a young boy from Earth who is a huge sci-fi fan, and he is uh, randomly selected to, and secretly by the way, to be in a delegation from Earth to the Space Federation, and he, he is joined by three other young people who um, are have all scored very high academically, uh, and they have been chosen to be Earth's delegation to basically prove that Earth is worthy of being part of this um, federation of planets. Now, the other three people in his delegation have been chosen because they are highly academic and skilled, and he has been chosen randomly. So his, needless to say, his counterparts don't expect much from him. They think he's just, you know, there for the ride. They don't think highly of him. They don't know, really, what kind of skills he actually has. And so they are on their way through space, and then they are joined by other delegations from other planets who are also 
vying to be a part of the planet, the Federation of Planets. And each of these delegations are the same, set up the same way. Three of the kids are picked because they have high skills, and one is selected randomly. So the group of randoms, hence the title, uh, you can imagine that uh, they will band together because they are not well thought of by their counterparts. Uh, so they have to kind of prove themselves, and it's just a really fun book. I, I thought it was great, and uh, I have the next book in the series on my TBR for sure. Then uh, the most recent book I read is Omega City. This takes place in current day, but it references the Cold War and that time in history when we were all worried that there was going to be a nuclear attack and people were building underground bunkers and, and everything like that. Um, the two kids, the main kids um, in the story, they are trying to save their father's reputation. He is a, uh, I believe, a science professor or a professor of something, and uh, he's written a book that has been... Um, not well thought of and he's got a, a reputation as a crackpot and they are trying to prove that what he has written is true and so they may stumble across some interesting clues to an underground uh, city and it's just really neat i i thoroughly enjoyed it it's very intense it's dangerous it's um uh, suspenseful uh I, I thought it was great then the next one I didn't expect to like as much as I did, but I really enjoyed it. It is a Robin Hood retelling. The series is called Robin Hoodlum, uh, a Robin Hoodlum adventure. This is it's Shadows of Sherwood by Kekla Magoon. And in this Robin Hood retelling, Robin is a female. It is set in the future. Uh, there's a little bit of magical realism. Uh, there is a great cast of characters, and it uh, and each character ties in with an actual Robin Hood character. So it's a lot of fun. And this is another series that I'm interested in continuing. A lot of Sunshine State books are first in series. Not all of them are books that I'm interested in continuing on, but a few are. And this is one of those books. Then uh, the next one I read in print. Oh, and by the way, this one, um, all of these so far in this group, I, yeah, all of these I've had to read in print. I don't think there was, uh, if there was an audio available, I couldn't get it. So uh, all five of these books I read in print, so there's no audio narrator for these. Uh, How to Almost Ruin Your Summer by Taryn Soders. This is a camp story, a summer camp story where everything that could go wrong does. You've got your stereotypical uh, mean girl who makes trouble, and you've got... Um, you know, uh, I think frogs and spiders and everything like that. You've got uh, class. There's, of course, a choice of classes, and our main character gets there last and, you know, doesn't get the class she wants because the mean girl, you know, threw a tray of food on her. You know, it's just all kinds of stuff like that. Everything that could go wrong does, and uh, she wants to go home because she. it's just not what she thought it was going to be. And I thought it was a really fun story, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, then this one I thought was going to be more of a horror story. It's actually not. It is a hurricane survival story. It takes place in uh, on the Gulf Coast of Alabama. So uh, because it's a hurricane story, I thought it's an excellent choice for Florida middle schoolers to read. It is Terror at Bottle Creek by Watt Key. And... Um, I pretty much summed it up. It's a hurricane survival story. The There's kids from two different families. Through a series of events, they end up outside instead of indoors where it's safe. And uh, and they have to survive. They're trying to get to, um, uh, because they're on the coast, they've got to get to some place that is um, uh, high ground. There's all kinds of wild animals that are also trying to get to high ground. And it's pretty intense. So uh, uh, it's not a real long, it's not a very long book either. And if that interests you, then you might enjoy that. Okay, so let me put these back on the shelf and I'll get the last group. Okay, so I've got five more books. Four of them I rated four stars. And the last one I'll show you I rated three stars. And I'll tell you why. Um, the next one I want to tell you about is The Nerdy Dozen by Jeff Miller. This is a little cliched in that you have a group of kids who have been chosen for a secret military mission because they're good at video games. But uh, I thought it was a fun story. The location they go to is um, is pretty unique and the um uh the mission they're on a mission to rescue an invisible plane so it's 
pretty far out there. You know, you really got to suspend reality for this. But I thought it was uh, it was a lot of fun, and I, I enjoyed it. Then uh, this one was a little more intense. Uh, it's a contemporary book about a young girl whose mother is suffering from agoraphobia, and she is starting the seventh grade and her um, best friend, a neighbor, has informed her that he cannot be her friend at school anymore because he is going to um, start a new experiment and he's going to become a hipster. And she is just simply not uh, not hipster enough to be his friend at school. So, uh, you know, he's not going to be... He's just he's telling her ahead of time, I guess that's a good thing, that he's going to ignore her at school. He's not going to be her friend. So she has to come up with some new friends at school, and they end up being sixth graders, which, you know, for a seventh grader, that's a little bit of a step down. But um, she gets to learn a lot about herself and um, and does a lot of growing during her seventh grade year. I thought it was an excellent book. She also has a little sister, and uh, their home life is rough because their mother won't leave the house. So they have a lot of things to do to to help maintain the household and uh, you know go for groceries and at, at one point you know there's no food in the house i think um their uh father has some uh he's injured or something and can't go to the store either so uh you know it, there's a lot going on uh i thought it was a very heartfelt book uh very sweet and it's it's cute because she wishes that she could be a fictional book character so a lot of the situations she's in she tries to kind of think if this were a book how would it go you know that kind of thing and um i thought it was an excellent book and it is uh, courage for beginners by karen harrington i think this is available on audio i don't know the narrator i read it in print but um uh, i think it is available this one I listened to on audio, The Mark of the Dragonfly by Jalee Johnson, narrated by Kim My Guest. This is a fantasy adventure, some steampunk elements. Uh, I thought it was really good. It is about a girl on another, uh, she's in another planet and um it starts out uh she's a scavenger and these meteor showers occur on her planet and things rain down from outer space of course they're very radioactive and you're not supposed to be out in a meteor shower at some point when it's deemed safe people go out and scavenge for things that they can sell well she doesn't like to wait until it's legal to go out she likes to be the first one there to get as much as she can because she basically has nothing and while she's out out, uh, as, as the book opens, she is out scavenging, and um, she runs across a caravan that has been wrecked, and I believe the only person that she finds alive is this young girl with a mark that indicates that she's under the protection of the king of one of the nearby kingdoms, or maybe the kingdom she's in. I'm not sure. There's a couple of kingdoms nearby. So she thinks, well, if I take this girl, who has no memory, by the way, if I take this girl to the king, then there's bound to be a reward. So it's their adventure. Um, they have to uh, sneak onto a train which is guarded by a, a shapeshifter and it, it just goes on from there. Now it's not really my type of book but my friend Akos read it and she loved it. So it's definitely a highly rated book and uh, I think that if that sounds interesting to you that you would enjoy it. It is available on audio and, um, and it's quite, uh, quite a fantasy book. Then the next one is kind of creepy. <laughs> Usually there's at least one creepy or horror type book on the Sunshine State list. And so so this is the one for this year. It's The Nest by Kenneth Opal. It's, um, it's got some illustrations by John Clausen. Um, <clears throat> it is about a, a boy whose um, baby brother has... He's a newborn baby and he's very ill. He, he's, they're not sure if he's going to make it or not. And there's a growing wasp nest on the side of his house. And the wasps are uh, talking to him through his dreams and trying to tell him that they can fix the baby and uh, trying to get him to agree to, to help them, you know, help, you know, fix the baby. And it's just really creepy. And he's not quite sure that he wants to do things exactly like they're wanting him to do. And it's it's out there. <laughs> I've actually listened to this on audio. I read it first in print, then I listened to it on audio more recently, and I'll have to type in the name of the narrator. Um, it's very lyrical, though. Uh, it's very... Uh, it's just interesting. It, so, uh, I, I think I also heard uh, uh, Reagan from Peru's Project. She read this last year, and uh, she kind of... I think, as I recall, she described it as weird. 
too. So then the last one, I only rated it three stars um, because I got so frustrated with the main character. She's one of those girls that you just can't tell her anything without her arguing. And uh, her father tries to tell her that she's in danger, that, uh, you know, they're both in danger. And instead of getting her head down when, uh, you know, if someone's starting to shoot at them, she says, no, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do what you say until you tell me what, you know, until you tell me what's going on. Well, then someone starts shooting at her. You know, do what your parents say first and ask questions later, really. <laughs> so that was the first thing. Uh, and then it also is, um, has one of those tropes, which, uh, Jen from Jen Talks Audiobooks, uh, calls the special snowflake <laughs> where this girl, same girl, she discovers that she's from some, um, uh, bloodline and her ancestry uh, <clears throat> is such that she's got some sort of special powers if she can um, mentally bond with this particular object and of course everyone wants to get to this object because other people want to get control of it before she does so she's trying you know they're trying to kill her and it, it goes on from there I think kids that are this kids in this age group I think would really enjoy it it is a fun adventure story but as an adult I got kind of put out by this girl and then it just you know it just kept going so that I thought Ugh, you know give me a break <laughs> so I don't think I will continue with the series it is called uh, Moving Target by Christina Diaz Gonzalez I say that I actually I'm not even sure if it is a series but I think this is the first in a series um but I won't swear to it. So anyway, uh, this is my least favorite, but still not a bad book. Uh, you know, you're welcome to read it and see if you have the same thoughts that I did. Um, but uh, but anyway, I I enjoyed the uh, the reading of it. Sometimes it's kind of fun to find a book that you could fuss at, you know. So that that experience uh, wasn't too bad. So anyway, um, <clears throat> those are the 15 books. For the 2017-2018 uh, Sunshine Reader Award list. Now, I told you that I would tell you the winners. And so let me put these on the shelf and I will do that. So I think I said this at the beginning of the video, but in case I didn't, the uh, Florida for Media and Education uh, posts this list uh, every April for the next school year. And so the kids are... Uh, encouraged to read these books and if uh, any middle grade student middle uh, you know sixth to eighth grade student who reads at least three of them um, they can vote and then their school librarian sends in their votes and they are compiled so that for the whole state we come out with the winner so uh, there is a little YouTube video that announces the winners and I can link it down below but I'll go ahead and just tell you the third place winner was how to um, How to Almost Ruin Your Summer by Terrence Soders. Now, I rated this one four stars, and it was, uh, I had it in, in the ranks of things. I had it somewhere in here, I think, yeah. So, it was about middle for me. Now, uh, the second and first place winners were in my top five. So, uh, the second place winner was Framed by James Ponty, and uh, I... I have to agree. It was fantastic. And then the first place winner was The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. And again, I, I wholeheartedly agree. This book was fantastic. So uh, I, was, I was excited to, um, to see what the students from all over Florida chose as their top winners for, uh, for this year. And uh, I'm curious to know if you have read any of these and what you thought of them. And if you think that you... Um, might read some of them if anything has caught your interest then let me know so um that's it for this video i am going to start now in may reading uh next year's list and i hope to get at least five of them read in may and then maybe uh five in june and five in july so that by the time the school year starts i will be done and i'll be able to talk books with all the kids uh coming in for uh next school year so that's it that's all i have for this video i hope you are having a great day, read a good book, and God bless you.